Now, I'm going to tell you right now that what I'm about to share with you in this video is not common knowledge. It's not the kind of thing you're going to find in books. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm taking a risk telling you this because I'm, I'm just not supposed to tell you. Now, I didn't always know this kind of thing. As a matter of fact, I used to be a pretty typical blues player, average. The pentatonic scale was my to-go scale. That's all I used. And basically, when I had to solo, I would just place my fingers on that first position of the minor pentatonic scale, depending on the key. Just let my fingers move, play the licks that I had learned before. It worked. That was me. But even though the, the notes were fine, because it was pentatonic, my playing was very boring and very conventional. There was nothing about my playing that really stood out. And I know I'm not the only one doing that, right? You find the pattern that works, and then you play the licks, like this one. Or this one. Pretty straightforward. But the problem is that you're basically repeating the same exact thing over and over, which means that it's not really a living language. And music is a living language. So anyways, that was me. That was my life as a guitar player. And uh, I was feeling a little frustrated. My playing was just boring. <sighs> so I tried a bunch of different things to kind of escape that feeling of being stuck on the guitar. I tried learning new licks. I tried learning new scales. I, I even tried modes. That, completely didn't make sense to me until something happened that completely changed that for me. This happened the night of June 3rd, 2007. And I remember that because it was my 30th birthday. I had spent the night with my buddy Richard playing at the Scat Club. Open jam night, still using the minor pentatonic scale. And I came back late that night, ready to go to bed. And then right in front of my door was the envelope. It had simply said, happy birthday. Now to this day, I'm still not sure who left that envelope. All I could go by was the handwriting and the cryptic signature that went at the bottom of the letter that was found in the envelope. If my calculations are correct, today is your birthday. We have been watching you for a very long time and it is obvious to us that you are indeed the chosen one. Yes, we have chosen you because you are the worst guitar player in human history. The secrets revealed in this message are not for everyone. Sincerely, Octo Cayman the fourth on behalf of the Guild of the String Benders. Now the weird thing is that in addition to that letter came what looked like riddles, half diminished theories. Take thy six note blues scale, remove the fourth and fifth, Half diminished exhale. No, it's not a myth. Pretty weird, right? But I gave it a shot. So let's take this step by step. Take the six note blues scale. All right, well, here's a blues scale in A. Remove the fourth and fifth. I guess we're talking about intervals here. So we're gonna remove the fourth and the fifth. And that's kind of a weird thing. Half diminished exhale, no, it's not a myth. Wait a second, that, that is the half diminished arpeggio. Does that mean that I could play half diminished instead of the blues scale? Oh my gosh, let's give that a try. Wow. Well, let's take a look at the second riddle. Octocamen's shapes of optic. What? Penta is your dwelling. You can step outside. Three note shapes propelling half steps to your bride. Uh, oh, well, let's see what we have. Penta is your dwelling. Home? I'll just stay in the penta scale, sure. Well, let's try that in G. G minor pentatonic. You can step outside. Well, yeah, I can play outside notes. Three note shapes propelling half steps to your bride. Three note shapes, three note shapes. Well, there's a lot of three note shapes. So this one. Half steps to your bride. Maybe 
He's saying that I could start that shape outside of the pentatonic scale and go back home using half steps. Huh. Let's give that a try. Wow, those riddles are, are something else. Let's take a look at the next one. Drunken noodle notes. I don't know who wrote these, but wow. Do not bend like fools do, for they are not aware that notes are so much better when you pre-bend with flair. I guess that means that I shouldn't bend the regular way, which would be notes like this or that. Notes are so much better when you pre-bend with flair. I guess I could target notes with pre-bends, maybe a half step below. Let's give that a try. Well, that was pretty cool. Well, let's take a look at the next one. Octo Cayman's Diminished Dilemma. Starting with the blue note, stack the minor thirds. You are now a sailboat traveling with the birds. Well, I guess we'll start with a blue note. Maybe start in B. Here's the, the blue notes, right? Stacking minor thirds, huh? What does that do? Hey, that's the diminished arpeggio, huh? What happens if we throw that in? Well, next riddle, Octocamon's deflated blue notes. Landing on the flat five is not always wrong. When you do, you'll survive. This will make you strong. Sounds pretty straightforward. Just land on the flat five. Usually I use it as a passing note, but I wonder, what if? Uh, moving on, Octo Cayman's directional focus. Penta has two sidewalls. Spend time on each one. He who can't, he just stalls. Do it. You just won. That was weird. Penta has two sidewalls. Hmm. Well, this is my pentatonic scale. Playing this in D. Now, wait a second. The left side looks like a wall, and the right side looks like another wall. All right, so I have my two side walls. Spend time on each one. Huh. Usually when I play, I, I go back and forth between the, the left and the right side. What if I played a series of notes on a single wall? What does that sound like? Uh, the next one was really weird at first, but man, once I got it, it completely blew me away. Check this out. So this one is called Bendy Secrets. Close thy eyes and wiggle. Finger to your left. Click this other riddle. Do it. You'll be blessed. Ooh. 